Hi there, this is Mini Mazir from Brampton, Ontario. Um, I have with me today Cheyenne from Access Law. Cheyenne is going to be sharing with us um, some of the changes uh, his law firm has made to accommodate clients in today's uh, situation with COVID-19, how they're successfully closing their transactions. Thank you, Mini, for the invitation and uh, welcome everybody uh, to this podcast. Um, I'd like to just to give you a quick introduction about me and how we're evolving our business processes to handle our, our real estate closings. So uh, my name is Cheyenne and I'm with Access Law. We were founded back in 2012 and really our motto was to be accessible to everyday Canadians. We really believe there is a better way to provide legal solutions. So along the points of being accessible to everybody. Um, so obviously this pandemic has created some interruption in our businesses um, as you know we can't really meet with clients face to face so there are really great solutions that we've implemented um, to really counter that and uh, obviously law society has been a great um, supporter of that as well so um, i look forward to sharing some of that insights with you Okay, so Shaina, you and I, um, we, we talked about a little bit earlier about um, your office um, help clients with mobile transactions. So you would go to your client's home and, um, you know, complete a transaction if needed. So tell us a little bit about how you handled that before and how you're doing the signings now. Yeah, so um we really uh we aren't really your traditional law firm so even before all of this we were um uh we have our offices open late in the evenings and on open on weekends to accommodate clients as we know that they're working probably hard during the day so um our offices are still open uh, despite what's going on um obviously some of our hours has been uh it's been shortened, but now what we're able to do to kind of give clients some comfort as well is we're um, doing our signing appointment virtually now. So just like how we are interacting here, we would get on um, a Zoom conference and we would go through the documentation um, with clients, um, answer any questions they may have, and um, and obviously check their IDs to make sure that we can commission our documents. So Law Society has provided us with some uh, flexibility to be able to commission our documents virtually now. So that we're really grateful of. So we really adopted that um, into our processes now. And, and every client is, wants to have their virtual signing appointments done. They don't really want to be visiting any of our offices, which we, we make sense. And we are a big supporter of that as well. So. That's good. So Cheyenne, in terms of the, you know, the check, so when they have a purchase, there is a balance that is due um, to the lawyer, well, for your trust account. What accommodations do you have for that now? Typically, many of the cases, they're doing the bank draft that they're bringing to your office. Um, since you're doing virtual signing, how do you do the checks and balances? How are the clients yeah. getting the money to you? So... Um, we, um, so banks are still open as, um, all of you may know, but they're really working at limited capacity. So many of the banking centers are closed. So, um, we do still try to accommodate if somebody wants to actually drop in a physical check for us, as there are central banking centers open in, in, in any area. But what we do recommend, just so that clients don't really have to leave their home, is if they can accommodate or if they can arrange for, um, uh, for the funds to be wired to our account. So maybe contacting their personal banker and asking if they were able to wire money, provide written authorization. So we are, we, that's how we are handling the transactions from our end. So when we are, when we are completing, a, let's say, a purchase or a sale, when we are uh, dealing with another law firm, that's how we are transferring uh, funds amongst each other. So um, what happens is banks normally send us the mortgage proceeds into our trust account now through wire, 
and, um, uh, and we obviously collect the down payment and the deposit from the client and we would be able to complete a transaction. If they're, if they are not able to do a wire transfer, then certainly we can take their um, draft or a certified check and deposit it personally into our trust account to be able to close their transaction in a timely manner. Okay, so wire transfer, they will just go into the bank. Um, you're providing some sort of information for them to take to the bank and successfully do that wire transfer. And that's sure. something that happens just for our clients to know um, right away, correct? Absolutely, yes. So okay. even that's, that is even our process right now because obviously we have our bookkeepers and, and uh, you know, normal, in a normal case, we would go to the banks and pick up checks just so that we can, um, you know, we can provide clients with, with, a, with a timely solution. Um, now, the only drawback sometimes with these wire transfers is there is, there is really no um, guaranteed in terms of um, when the funds will be received on your account. However, we put all measures possible so that we can, we have the funds earlier, like from the day before, and we're able to send those wires so that they will have their money in time to make sure that there's no hold back. And you know, to that point is I think everybody's also understanding of the situation. So we obviously retain copies of all that the transactions that were completed, whether it's to the other side or whether it's to the clients. Um, we've had cases where the funds were delayed by a day or two um, because there was a good, just a quick turnaround time. We received the funds late, but we do the best that we can on our end to what we are in control of to make sure that there is no, there is no delay. Um, so, uh, but sometimes we're at the mercy of the bank. So if we are sending whatever we need to for them to complete their wire transfer, um, it may take them a day, it may be on the same day. So w some of the mitigating factors, we try to do that early on if we are in funds to be able to complete the transaction. So would you recommend, let's say you're the, the purchasing client um, to do a wire transfer if they have th that balance there in their account uh, at least 24 to 48 hours before to your office, if that's a possibility, is that what you would recommend? Yes, absolutely. So what, um, so some of the um, advices that we give now, um, really realizing what's really, what's really happening is just give yourself some more time than you would normally do. Um, and I can't really stress that enough. So if you are, um, don't wait on the last day or two, um, send us the, the transfer. Or if you're handling a mortgage with your broker or your lending institution, just talk to them so that they can send us the mortgage instructions earlier on. Don't yeah. leave it to the last minute because that would just, um, you know, then we would have to scramble to just make ends meet. So that, that would really help us a lot. That's one thing that I would emphasize is if you have that money in your account, just transfer it, make sure we have the money a day or two before the actual transaction happening. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we have the mortgage instructions a week in advance, of your closing, then we would be able to um, send a requisition for funds and then they would be able to wire us the money to a day before the closing date. So then everything will be smooth. But if we're leaving things to the last minute, it just, it can create uh, complications as you can imagine. I see. So for those of you who don't know, so when we're talking about mortgage instructions, when you're doing your purchase and sale agreement, your realtor, which is myself, we take care of that. Your mortgage broker or mortgage agent, when they're signing, asking you to sign off on your mortgage, that last set of documentation that you'd be signing, it's on them to um, send that to their banks on time or to the lenders on time. And they're going to be requesting um, something that we call a mortgage instructions that simply lets um, the lawyers and the other banks banks know, you know, what are the steps needed to complete this transaction? You know, this is the amount that they're looking for. So the set of instructions will be sent to the lawyer. And in, especially in this case, 
what would be recommended is for the purchaser to reach out to their mortgage broker or mortgage agent and say, hey guys, we've closed our file, we've already signed off. Um, could you please request the mortgage instructions to be sent to our lawyers? And I've seen cases where it's sent you know, a week, two weeks in advance, but many times, like uh, Cheyenne mentioned, sometimes they send it the day of or the day before. So especially in this time, would want to maybe reach out to your broker if you have a transaction going and say hey can you set request my mortgage transaction to be sent sooner um you know at least a few days before the closing date so good one um cheyenne one question um which is a little bit outside of this some of the clients that we've had in the past um, when they're signing off with their lawyers uh, there's a package of information the closing documents um, generally they'll be given a copy in the mail um, and what is your office doing differently to accommodate um, today's tech savvy or Millennials who have access to emails um, I've had complaints in the past where you know documents are not um, delivered to the seller or the purchaser in time from their lawyer do you have anything in place are you emailing these out um, what's the expected time so that's a great question. So we, um, we, we are a very much tech oriented firm. However, we try to accommodate any clients that are still want to receive paper in the mail. So um, we were, I guess we were ahead of the, uh, the curve on that one there. Previously, even before um, this pandemic transpired, we were using email to sending what you call like a, our final package. So once once we have your name uh, registered on title so as a purchaser and um, we register the mortgage against the property um, we would actually have a fairly quick turnaround 48 hours post your closing we send you the final report which would say what we've done for you on behalf of you on this transaction so here's your completed deed on your name and here's a mortgage registration so we provide you that package in 48 hours post your closings and that's done always through email uh, for us. So, um, I mean, fortunately for us, we didn't really have to do that much different. Um, so we are keeping with that because clients still like that. Um, however, if they, somebody still wants to have paper copies, we will do our best to accommodate them. Okay. Um, just you know, send them the actual package as well. Okay, great, great. That's good to know. And Cheyenne, for our older demographics, um, you're saying in, in, in regards to COVID-19 now, so let's say you have a request to go out because someone is unable to leave their home and they're an older generation. Um, they might not have access or understand how to use Zoom, for example. Um, how, what is the thought process in dealing with those types of clients? Yes, absolutely. So what happens is sometimes, obviously, one thing we don't do is we don't judge. Um, we've had funny stories. We've had clients um, in their 90s um, where, you know, sometimes we're like, we can do it this way. We can have, you know, send someone to your home to sign your documents uh, or you can have a tech. So sometimes to our surprise, they're like, no, what do you mean? I won't be able to do it um, through virtually. So we obviously don't judge and sometimes um, uh, seniors, they get assistance from somebody in their home to be able to set up, uh, set up things virtually, which we always welcome. Um, but um, if in the case of actually somebody really has no ability uh, to, uh, you know, get on a computer and, and, and connect with us online, then what we do is, we have, we can send one of our lawyers if it's within GTA and if it's not, we have a team of uh, commissioners out there that would actually, that, that would go in and explain you the documents um, and, and, commit, and commission uh, um, our, our papers. So, so obviously we wanna, you know, we wanna keep uh, social distancing so what what we are doing now is for those clients is we would actually uh, drop off the package okay 
So we will obviously stay two meters away. We would just record, um, get their IDs and, and commission the documents. Once they have that package, we would actually go through that package with them over the phone because we can't sit face to face and go through that documents. So we would drop off the package, we'd get their IDs, we stay away two meters apart and we stop, we commission the documents and then we'll leave the package for them. And then our lawyer or clerk that's looking after their closing will go through the document package with them over the phone. So, um, you know, really, really, um, you know, what we're trying to do, we try to be as accommodating as possible. Uh, like I said, our offices are still open as well. So if clients still want to come, um, you know, we, you know, we can accommodate them, um, you know, and go through the documents with them in person. But obviously we want to be, you know, we, we want to look after our, our employees health and yours as well. So we want to give you those creative solutions to do it without leaving, leaving your home. Okay, that's pretty good so that you're able to drop it off, give them some time to look at the documents, um, going over it, you know, via the phone while keeping with the health regulations right now, and then, you know, having them sign. So that's good um, to know that your office is able to do that. Um, In terms of transactions failing, how have you seen any changes from March, middle of March to now? Yeah. So, um, so I can tell you that uh, you may not believe, but there's uh, as much as people may think, um, there's not a lot of uh, incomplete transactions um, because um, so there's two sides of the story with us. So one is being able to um, have access to uh, the, the title. Um, so, um, so, so now all of the titles of the home are, are cloud-based. So before it used to be a, a registry system, now it's on a title system. So we have access. We don't really need to go into the land registry to, to register your name against your home. So it's all done virtually now. So that part, even though they don't allow for any in-person uh, visits, we can do that virtually now. That's how it was done before. Um, so the only times that we really now see, um, incompleted transactions or failed transactions is, um, unfortunately when there is a decision from your bank or your lending institution that they no longer are going to be, um, honoring their approval. Um, and that is because obviously your financial situation has changed. Um, And now we see lenders doing that more. Um, It's not that everybody's doing it, but now they want that even if, even though they've given your mortgage approval a month before, they just want to do a a quick check-in with you to make sure that you still are employed and that you're still able to meet your obligation in paying out your mortgage payments. So, those are really the times that um, we've seen fails. failed transactions, correct? And um, if I yeah. could ask, but in terms of COVID nineteen, with so many people um, sort of, you know, with the stay at home order, and jobs are not there, so we've got over three point something million that has applied for EI. Have you seen any impact as yet in terms of transactions not being funded? Um, so far or there isn't any of that as yet yeah so if so no we because of that um yeah so we have had um individuals uh whether where they've done everything like we talked about they you know we've we've got their um the approval from the broker and they've they've sent us a solicitor package um but unfortunately we've got a notice from the lender saying that we're no longer honoring our commitment. And unfortunately, um, client had to resort to other avenues to be still, because what you need to understand is, even though this is an unprecedented event, um, you still have a duty to complete uh, uh, the transaction. Um, So in terms of contract law, that's pretty set. Um, That's pretty set that there's no really flexibility. If you have a firm offer, um, it is your obligation to 
um, to comp- you know to fulfill that contract. Mm-hmm. So um, you know whether you have to resort for a short term to an alternative lender or a or a private mortgage until you're able to secure a new employment, um, then then that would be probably the avenue you have to go. Um, however, having said that, sometimes the, the other side, so whether, so it would be the sellers, so they are more understanding. So, so, the, so the type of transaction we have, we're actually on the resale transactions. We've seen very, very much level of compassion and understanding from the other sides. Um, sort of in terms of giving the, the purchaser some time to secure another lender. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, and with regards to new built homes, so if any of you have new built closings, um, so what we've seen is there's been a suspension of because there's no longer, they're not allowing new contractors to go in and complete whatever they need to still do. So we've seen um, a majority of them just, even if, even if they've given us a final um, closing date on those um, units, they're saying that um, until further notice, not giving a specific time, until further notice, um, we're not uh, completing these transactions. Um, so we're just on hold on that to see seen, when yeah. would be the next, next uh, final closing date. Mm-hmm. I've seen that as well from pre-construction. So some of my clients, um, just a few days, four or five days before the transaction is closed, the uh, the builders have sent the, the sent an email to them saying that you know they're gonna until further notice. There's no time because trades, some of the trades are not allowed on site, right? Um, for their health reason. And. So just to sum it up, you're able to go to the client's home or um, drop off a package, make other alternative communication, do digital signing um, with checks for sure. And um, in terms of failed transactions, you're seeing some of the lend- uh, some of the lenders are kind of backing out of their commitment that they have sent and allowing the purchaser, well, the purchaser now have to go look at other avenues for funding. Um, and, uh, what do you think, how is this going to affect your law firm and transactions going forward? So after all of this, any positive or negative changes? Um, I guess, you know, for me is, um, I, you know, as, as tough the situation is for everybody and concerning, um, I like to kind of give it a, um, spin it in a positive light. Um, and what I really mean by that is um, it's really pushing um, uh, businesses and organizations to really think smart about how they're handling their everyday business. So in a today's world of, you know, 2020, you, you know, you, you would be surprised to know how we are still, especially in the legal field, how we're still so paper-based. So um there's been you know many legislations that are essentially on hold not really passed um to allow us to do things virtually if need be obviously it's to our discretion and and the preference for the client as well so this event has has helped speed up the process like you have no like you can't even imagine mm-hmm. so so now and you know, we also got a news today that we may be able to do um, wills also virtually as well, executed wills. So uh, this is something that's essentially been on on hold with you know with obviously two sides of of of, of it uh, fighting. So really, it's it's helped us really solidify a lot of our um, our our channels in, in being able to complete transactions, whether a client is in you know, um, somewhere really far or they, their seniors, it's hard for them to come, come, uh, you know, come out of their house. So, um, it's, it's really, really helped us to, um, be able to deliver on our promise and being really accessible to everyday Canadians. So, um, that's really exciting actually. Um, 
even though I have my car, I can take it and drive it out to an office and get a document signed. It will save me so much time on even one of my purchase. When I have to come to the lawyer's office, I have to calculate my drive time. It's I'm, I'm losing four hours of my day just to sign that piece of paper to complete the purchase. So if you're able to do it digitally is great. In terms of wills, um, have, are you seeing a lot of increased requests for people to get their wills completed now? Yeah, so, um, so you know, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, conventionally you would probably think that we got an increase in the number of wills. Um, and that, that hasn't been true. And there is a, there is a, re, a, a really important reason for that is because um, for wills, there is a need for us to, um, in order to execute on your will, there needs to be two witness signatures. Now, how the law has been around that has been the two witness signatures cannot be any of the beneficiaries on your will. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to actually get third party. Now, third party is, are you going to invite someone that you don't know into your home to witness your will? Not really. So, and they did not allow for virtual meetings or virtual signings uh, of, of a will. So now it's been exciting news that came out this morning. Um, that's really allowing us to do that. Uh, and that was really what was stopping us because people didn't want to come to our offices to complete their will. So, um, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to see an increase of that. Um, and uh, we always give uh, a 15% discount um, to our real estate closing clients if they want to complete their will as well. So just gives them more of the reasons that, you know, when we started this business, you couldn't believe that more than half Canadians, they did not have a will in place. So if you actually see what the probate process is and how complicated it can be and delaying the process when you're dealing with such a stressful situation, um, everybody needs to get their will done as well. So, um, so that's something that we're looking to do, help, help, help individuals if that's something in their mind and they have time right now to do it. So, so why delay it any further? So we're, we're excited for that. For that, okay. And I think that pretty much sums it up for our, um, our meeting call today. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, so thanks, Minnie, for, for inviting me to be, be on the call. So, you know, it is um, as, as much as, um, uh, you know, I've, I've given enough insights into this, but we really are um, taking it day by day. Um, so, um, and we, uh, we work with individuals to, um, whatever their concern is to make sure that they're well looked after. Um, so it's not that each case would be very different. Um, we, you know, we, we, we take it, we, we take individual clients inquiry as it is. And, and if it's, we can assist them with accessibility, whether it's a price, we will do our best to accommodate them. So. Um, I look forward to, um, you know, answer any questions that your clients or anybody watching this may have, um, because at this point, I think, you know, we want to be as transparent uh, than more, more transparent than ever, um, as it is very, very um, uncertain times. So, um, so I look forward to, you know, helping individuals. Sounds great. Well, Cheyenne, I appreciate you taking the time today um, to sp for speaking with me and, and these questions. Um, for our viewers, uh, the contact information of Access Law and Cheyenne's information will be um, on a link somewhere below. And also, hopefully, we can get you, Cheyenne, to maybe go on, in, uh, on another session to talk about um, estates and wills because that's been a question for since 2016 2017 that i really haven't carved out the time to look at and encourage my clients to do um if as a realtor you're doing 50 or 100 transactions per year that's potentially 90 percent of the families that you can help in terms of getting their wills completed and making their lives a little bit easier um, when it do come, you know, when the time come to kind of disperse their assets. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mary. You're welcome. Take care guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.